Thanks for joining me guys. We have an awesome ride for you today. I'm going to talk you through it, but if you'd rather not listen to me drone on, please feel free to hit that mute button and just enjoy the ride. So we started off in Outdoors and we'll be coming back up here later. We're descending down through the first few bends. They're all numbered from 21 at the bottom to number one at the top. Hence why they have the name the 21 bends. But we're going to turn right at the traffic light there and go through the small village of Uez. We're going to ride underneath the ski lift and onto this, the Pass de la Confession. And I would really recommend that you take this road. If you ever make the climb of Outdoors, you should definitely descend this way. It makes a nice loop, but it also gives you this incredible bit of tarmac. Looking over my left shoulder, you get this brilliant view of the 21 Bends, a view of the climb, but you can also see right across the valley over all the mountain ranges. It's truly mind blowing. It adds in a little bit more climbing, but really not much, about 80 meters. You can see that was the top of the pass there at 1,542 meters. Careful on this descent, you can see there's a few rocks that fall off the mountainside, but it's just gonna wind you down. It's gonna bring you to the town of Villard Regular. Another quick little time, climb sorry, out of this town. When you get to the small mini roundabout, you're gonna follow the signs for Alamont, and that's gonna start your first proper descent. Now, I actually much prefer taking this descent than going down the 21 bends anyway. It's a lot quieter, as you can see with traffic, but also it's not quite as steep and there aren't as many hairpin bends, so you're not on the brakes too much. It's pretty frosty first thing in the morning. The sun's just coming up over the mountain and we're still in a lot of shade. And obviously you're not really moving much yet. We're just kind of sat on the bike, the wind howling in your face. You can see I've still got my gloves on. I don't even match. I should probably get a better pair of gloves there. Now we follow the signs for Alamont, but we're actually gonna skirt the village itself. We're gonna just stick on this road and that's gonna just take you around the outside. And it's a little bit quicker. Alamont, you may have heard of it. If you've ever done the triathlon in Outdoors, that starts in Alamont. Whether you do the long one or the short one, the swim is done at the reservoir at the bottom, which you might just be able to glimpse if you look to the right of the screen in a minute, once I come around this next hairpin bend. It's through the trees there. Sun's just starting to come up a little bit more. I'm getting freezing now. I'm eager to get to the bottom of the valley get those legs working, get some blood into them, get warmed up before we start the first climb. So I'm coming down from Ollie, coming down from Ollie, so I'm coming down following Ollie at the moment, do a lot of riding with him. He owns the shop, Cycloes, which is right at the finish of the climb in Outdoors. If you wanna check it out, I'll always put a link down to that shop in the description below. And if you wanna check this ride out as well, I've got a link to it on the Strava and you can see all the stats, how long it took, everything like that and you can follow me as well and if you've got any questions about riding in outdoors or the bull dozen area just hit me up and i'll get back to you it really is a mecca for cycling it's awesome so we finished that descent now as you see it was about 11k it takes about 20 minutes when we come out we're going to go over the bridge take a left and we're onto this new cycle path loads of people miss this out they just take the main road which connects alamont to port on which by most people's standards, isn't that busy, but it's much nicer, much prettier and quieter if you can get onto this cycle path. Perfectly flat, it just follows the river and it gives you a good time to get your legs warmed up. I think it's about 8K between Alamont and Baltoison. The cycle path does fork off in a few places, so you see we're gonna take a left over this bridge. Taking a left over this bridge will allow you to come right into Baltoison. If we didn't take that, it brings you up to the bottom of the cold or non, which we're going to be coming down later. So even if you miss that bridge, you can follow the path to the cold or non, and then from there, just cycle into Baltoison. Oh, back in the sun now, loving it. Approaching Baltoison, there's going to be a few little snaky sections here. I'm not really a fan of this bit of the cycle path. You can't get too much speed up, but it winds you through the town. And since I built it, if the, uh, if the drivers find you on the road, they can sometimes get a bit angry at you. But anyway, there we are, back on the road now, and we're just gonna pass through the center of the village. Bourdoison, if you're coming out here for cycle holidays, is probably the best place to base yourself. I live in outdoors myself, but it does mean that every ride I do finishes with a big climb. If you start in Borg, you know, if your legs are tired, you don't have to finish off with coming up a mountain. But now, 
here we are, this is what we've kind of come for today. This is the ascent to Villard Notre Dame. It's a really quiet road to a teeny little town. I'm like, amazed that they even built a town up here because the town's right on the edge of the cliff. There's only about 100 people that live there, yet they built this awesome road that takes you right up there. Starts off nice and gentle. You can see you're just coming through the forest. I think I've, yeah, that's me taking my jacket off, getting warmed up now. Quick pee, back on the bike, and up we go. So, it's just going to meander through the forest, but you'll see shortly that this road becomes absolutely epic. It's going to be fully on the cliff edge, you're going to get incredible views, and there's some really cool tunnels as well. Now, just look off to the side there, that's crazy. It's a sheer drop below me. And now, you can see I've got my phone out. This tunnel does have lights in now, they're new. It didn't used to, it used to be completely pitch black pitch black sorry but it's definitely worth having some lights on your bike because it's still pretty dark again this one here no lights in using my phone light there and because they really sort of snake there's some bends in them as well you completely lose the light it's only when you get towards the end you can see that light at the end of the tunnel I think there's maybe one more short one and as I say again the views just off the side there are incredible you don't want to go too close to the edge because it really is just a sheer drop down there. And as always, dead quiet this road. I don't think we see a single car the whole way up. So going nice and slowly now, obviously I'm planning two proper climbs in this ride. So I've got this climb here, which is roughly a thousand meters. And then we have the 21 bends up to Alpe d'Huez that we'll be doing later, which is also just over a thousand meters. So it's always important don't go too hard at the beginning because the last thing you want is for your legs to just blow out for you to give up when you're near the top now this is also part of a bigger challenge that I'm doing where I've been cycling up outdoors every day with the goal of getting up there every day for 30 days straight so I did outdoors yesterday and I've also done it for the three weeks prior. This is day 22 of this challenge. So just to add a little bit extra in, we've added this climb as well. And I'm interested to see how my legs are gonna cope with that second climb. So just enjoying the route at the moment, coming through the forest. It's not too hot, nice bit of shade. And with every sort of kilometer you go up, the view on the side just gets better and better and better. You can see the sun's coming up nice and high over the mountains. Just a real beautiful ride. As, as I say, this is an absolute cycling paradise. You could base yourself in Bourg de Oison, you know, for a whole week and never do the same road once. There's so many climbs all around the valley. It's not just, you know, the famous outdoors. You've got the Quad de Fer, the Glandon. Uh, this is Villard Notre Dame. You have La Barade, San Christophe, the Col de Seren. Uh, what else? The coldest Sabo, and that's just all within a stone's throw from Bourg d'Oison. If you're willing to venture a little bit further over the Col d'Ornon, for instance, you can do the Col de Parc too. Um, you've got the Col de la Mort, you've got the Galibier as well, so obviously within reach, the Marmot, which is a famous cycle ride that starts from Bourg d'Oison, goes over the Glandon, then it comes around the back of all the mountains, up over the Telegraph, Galibier, and then finishes back up with Alpe d'Huez after descending down the Col de Lottere. There's literally roads like this everywhere, and most of them are like this as well. You'll barely see any cars. So if you're into climbing, you know, if you're into riding your bike up some mountains, this is definitely the place for it. So just keep pedaling on, pedaling on, getting in the swing of things, going at a nice and steady pace here, not too quick at all. No need to burn the legs out. So let me know the biggest climb you've ever done. You know, maybe it's Box Hill in the UK, or maybe you've got some big hills in the US. Let me know in the comments down below. Where do you normally ride? What's the most difficult climb you've ever done? So first little bit of civilization there on the right. A tiny little hamlet. No idea who would live here. Can't imagine having to drive up and down here every day to get your groceries. It's not even a road I've even actually driven. It's all right on a bike, but some of the sections through those tunnels and next to the cliff edge, I would not want to be in my car for. No way. If you do come out here in a... Uh, in the autumn, you've got to be careful for the hunters. You see a few guys with sniper rifles and whatnot hunting the wild boar. All right, so we're almost at the top here. 
and as you can see you know some of the glaciers and things there the view is just incredible it is mountains all round and we're approaching now the village of Villard Notre Dame Villard just means village basically that's why you see there's loads of Villards through throughout France so we get into the village as I say it's a tiny little hamlet not many people live here 100 or so but just check out those mountains all around absolutely incredible so first car passed me there thankfully Ollie's not being too mean he's not making me go too fast right now he tends to be a little bit quicker than me on the bike so riding with him he always pushes it a bit too much for me but he's been nice today all right here we are Villa of Notre Dame real cool little town so we're just going to wind up through and I wouldn't worry too much about water. When you cycle in this area, literally every time you get to a village, there's a stop where you can get you know, the natural water straight from the source, just fill up your water bottles. So when I'm around here, I normally only bring one bottle and I know I can just fill it back up whenever I want. So we've passed through Villa of Notre Dame, but the climb isn't over. We're now on what's called the Col de Solide. And there's this little dirt road. So it's still kind of, you know, it's still tarmac at the minute, but it's gonna turn into, a uh, gravel path which connects Villard Notre Dame with Villard Raymond. And if it's rained recently, I would just avoid this one. But if you had a dry patch, then as you can see, the road really dries out. And you know, I'm doing this on a road bike, road tires, it's completely fine. And just when you can look off to the right, there was an amazing view just there. And this is probably the best view you'll get of the 21 bends. I know I said there was a good one earlier for the, from the Pasta de Confession, but off the side here, you're right in front of Outdoors and you can see all of them snaking up. So, mega, mega cool road this. Super quiet. The odd runner, the odd dog walker. And just be careful, don't go too fast. You don't want to go skidding off the edge here because you've got a thousand meters drop down to the bottom. A lot of time to think about what you did wrong. <laughs> all right. So last bit of the ascent to the colder solid here, a little bit gravelly. Just don't put too much weight on the back seat, otherwise that back wheel will skid out. Keep some weight over the handlebars, switching up, and almost at the top. And what is the altitude here? It is 1,680 meters. So not quite as high as Alpdoet, but still a decent climb. So the village you can see on the left there, this is Villard Raymond. So that road, as I said, connects Villard Notre Dame to Villard Raymond. This is a good climb itself as well, but I definitely would always do this loop in this direction because this descent is going to be much better than descending in the other way. You see some people coming down through there, and when you're going at 70k an hour and then you suddenly hit one of those pitch black tunnels, there's a few potholes in there, that's pretty scary. So I always prefer to do it in this direction. I recommend you do the same as well. So a lovely descent now. Still a little bit nippy, you can see I put my gloves back on and we're just going to cruise down through here, beautiful scenery. And this is bringing us into the valley where you have the Col d'Ornon. Col d'Ornon is probably one of the easier climbs in the area and we're just going to come onto that and descend the bottom part of it. It's a really nice one, one that I kind of love to blast. It's got an average gradient of only 5 or 6% or so. And it's got some flat sections as well, whereas a lot of the other climbs are kind of consistently between 8 and 11%, just a little bit steeper. As I say, just follow this descent. Really nice. The road's generally in pretty good condition. You can see there's a few cracks and whatnot there, but it's a decent route. Still in the shade, sun's still coming up. But in the summer out here, it's generally the best way to do it. If you wait till midday, you can get absolutely cooked on some of these climbs. But yeah, just enjoy the scenery. Beautiful, coming down through the lush greens, all the trees, snow-capped mountains in the background. It's perfect. So if you like this, let me know. Give me a like. Please hit that subscribe button. And... There's going to be a few more longer rides like this and I've got a trip to Vontu coming up. I'm going to do that one, never done that. And some riding down in the Gorge de Verdon, which looks incredible as well. But for the most part, I live in Outdoors and I do most of my cycling in this area. And I'm training up this summer. Hopefully, I'm going to be able to do the Marmot ride this year, which is the big ride that I mentioned earlier. It's over 180 kilometers long with over 5,000 meters of climbing. So a big old day in the saddle so that's why i need to start doing some of these longer rides to build up to that 
nearly down to the bottom now. We're going to cross over a small river at the bottom, and then as I say, we'll be back on the cold on on. From the cold on on as well, you have one other little climb, it's called Ool. It's just as you start it, if you take a right, it's about 11 of these really cool switchbacks which wind you up to another similarly tiny little village on the mountainside. So in the little town of Pallad, Pallad sorry, which is on the cold on on, stop there for another quick pee, nature cooled, and now we're just descending down. You can see here, yeah, really not as steep as what we just climbed up towards Villa of Notre Dame. Past a couple of cyclists, nice easy climb this one, which also of course makes for a good descent. The Tour de France a few years ago came down here, they started in La Mure, climbed over the Col on on of the other side and descended down this way before coming up Alpe d'Huez, which is exactly what we're going to be doing now. So yeah, really just let the bike fly down here. As you can see, Ollie always breaks away from me a bit on the descents. I'm not the fastest descender in the world. I had a bad accident a few years ago where I did skid out off a bend. Uh, luckily I was alright, but it gave me a bit of a fright, so there's no need to push it. So coming back through Bourg de Oison now, and when we get to the roundabout we're just going to hook a left. It's going to take us over the river, so that was a cycle path next to the river as well there that we just came uh, on before. This roundabout, take a left again, and we're now at the start of the climb to Alpe d'Huez. So, we should take the gloves off I imagine in a second, because it's about to get very sweaty. Ollie's going to pull, pull away from me a bit. His legs are fresher. He didn't do the bends yesterday, but he's also fitter. I'm just making excuses. So that was bend 21 there. As you can see, they're going to count down all the way to number one at the top. And this first section here, between 21 and 16, this is your steepest section. So many people go way too hard here. And you don't really make up much time and you just burn your legs out. So always take it nice and steady at the beginning. And when you get to 16, the gradient's going to drop down from, I think it's about 11.5 here, and it's going to drop back down to 8 or so. That's when you can crank up the gears, pick a bit of speed up. So coming up to bend 16, it's got a little pub here, it's called Lagarde. And then, nice, you can see I speed up a little bit, it's time to get the tunes on. Let's get going. I wasn't sure how my legs were going to feel, but to be honest, they're feeling alright. That's why I put the music on, I think I'm listening to a bit of Kolsch today. I found... He's a really good DJ, he's got some good tunes for cycling too. Not kind of too pumping, but just that nice kind of monotonous beat that just keeps you going. You should check him out. Kolsch, K-O-L-S-C-H. If you're not into your dance music though, maybe not. Let me know what you listen to when you're cycling. So this section here, as I mentioned, this is the mellower section. I mean, you're still climbing up a mountain, but you can pick up a bit of time here. So try not to just kind of stick in your last gear. And the tactics as well, so you can see the bends themselves. So if you look here, the bends themselves, they're the only flat bits you're going to get. So when you get to those bits, that's when you click up, give it a bit of a boost, and it's going to just push you up into the next section. Doing these every day, I really got to kind of learn the bends, really understand them. So this one here, number nine, that's your viewpoint. If you want a photo, look off the side there. Really cool view. And I've really learned to kind of listen to my body. As I say, don't push the beginning bit, but also learn where I could give it a bit more and where I should hold back. So now this is Ben 7. This one is called Dutch Corner. It's famous with all the cycling fans from the Netherlands and the Tour de France. They all camp out there wearing their orange shirts. It's a big sea of orange, and they just have like a massive party for like three days. Really, really cool atmosphere. I don't know how it became so, but maybe you know, let me know. So we're back up to Uez now. That was the traffic light where we turned off earlier. So we descended this part very first thing this morning. Final few bends. Now this one coming up, this is my least favorite. Bend four to three. It's just that little bit longer and you always seem to get a bit of a headwind coming over the top there. And it just seems to go on and on. I mean, not in this time-lapse mode, but it does in real life. You say hello to the cows on the right, get a nice whiff of cow pat, which is always nice. And then we're almost there, this is bend number one, no matter how knackered you are, 
whether you're dying or not, this part here, you can always push it and it always helps. And we've got some cyclists to chase down as well. So here we are back over the finish line, back in outdoors. That's the Indiana, stop there for a drink. Got the cycle away across the road, that's where you get your kit. As you can see, that was the total elevation and the total ride time is three hours, 55 minutes.